Welcome to Betsy and Tacy's neighborhood. Maud Hart Loveless was born two blocks down the street on the left at 214 Center Street. And she was born in 1892 and moved up here when she was six months old. Her father moved the family to this structure. At the time, it was a much smaller dwelling. And if you look at the house and look at the porch, the porch and the structure behind it, and also a little bedroom behind, were not they were not there at the time. And the house was added on to probably before 1897 because Maud makes no reference to the original structure. So the original house was very small and we have records that indicate it goes all the way back to about 1870. Maud always loved to write even as a very young child when she asked, had to ask her mother how to spell certain words like downtown and she had two places that she liked to write to sit when she wrote. One was in the crotch of a tree on this boulevard. It wasn't that tree. It was a different tree. She'd climb up there with her little box full of writing utensils and look far to the west and write down her stories. The second place where she loved to write was if we look beyond the tree branch here, the upstairs window, that was the bedroom that she shared with her sister, older sister, and she pushed the trunk that her uncle had given her in front of the window, she pretended that was her writing desk, and she would look far to the west and write her stories. Now keep in mind that when she was a little girl living in this house, many of the homes he were not here on this block, many of the trees were not here, and so she could see far to the west. She could see as far as Sibley Park, where the Blue Earth run, uh, empties into the Minnesota, and of course those rivers we know, have created a deep valley here. And so when she became a, an author and decided to write about her hometown, she didn't call it Mankato, she called it Deep Valley. So we are right here where the little hill, which was Hill Street in the books, comes up and ends up where the bench is. And this is the big hill. The big hill used to go up straight up here where there's one or two houses and the little girls would go up there and have their adventures. So with that, let's take a look at an 1892 home. Here we have a historical marker, Maud Hart Loveless, 1892 to 1980. Now Maud had two illustrators. Her first illustrator was a friend and they collaborated. It was Lois Lenski, who in her own right was a children's author and very well known illustrator. So she was known for the map on the back pages of her book. And you can see we're right here, this corner, and up the big hill. Lois illustrated the first four books, the books for the younger children. And when it came time for the high school books, she declined to illustrate them. Maud was greatly disappointed, but she recommended, Lenski recommended um, a friend, Vera Neville, and she did the high school books. And so she actually is illustrated many books than did Lois Lenski. On the back, we have a little short biography of Maud Hart Lopez. Maud's mother, Stella, when they lived in this house, did have a small little flower garden here. She had a yellow rose. She did have a little lilac bush. Of course, there would have been no garage behind the house, but there was a little barn for their horse and a little shed for the tack for the horse. Okay. kitchen. When we restored the house we had a local historian who guided us and gave us recommendations and he said that we should paint all the floors either brown or gray because the houses of that era were painted that way and he suggested perhaps green for the walls of the kitchen. There was a reason for that. The homes of this era were often green painted, the kitchens were painted green and they had discovered that when the flies came in, if they uh, 
landed on the green walls that pretty soon the flies would drop down dead to the floor and they later figured out it was because at that time arsenic made the paint green and so there's just enough arsenic in the paint that killed the flies so that's kind of an interesting thing. If you look around the rooms as we proceed you'll see that we have included Lois Linsky's illustration and when we accepted donations and made purchases for the house we were very careful to follow the illustrations so that the house would look exactly like it did when Maud lived here. We have, of course, they had no electricity back at that time, kerosene lanterns, kerosene lanterns in all of the rooms, and an ice box rather than a refrigerator, and of course then they would burn wood for the stove. And if you are familiar with the books, you know the girls one day made everything pudding and got into a bit of trouble because they took a big bowl and everything went into it and mother was not too pleased about that. We see the uh, sink is a dry sink. A sink, just a sink, is with plumbing. A dry sink has no plumbing. And so of course we have the pump that's connected to the cistern and we're standing, it's underneath the kitchen floor. And so all the rainwater is directed down into the cistern. Let's proceed into the dining room. Of course, we know that Maud wrote her books about friendship, family, and fun. All the fun that the girls of the neighborhood, Betsy, Tacy, and Tib, had in this house. Now, Maude was very excited when a new family moved in across the street. It was a large Irish family with lots of children, and so there was finally a little girl her age who would be in the neighborhood. And that little girl's name was Frances. Frances, but they called her Bic. They called her Bic because of her beautiful red hair, and when someone commented to her when she was a little girl, her hair is red as a brick, she at that time could not pronounce ours, and so it came out Bic. And so her whole life, she was known as Bic. And they continued their friendship into old age, and Maud was, would always write to her, my dear Bic. Um, when Maud was five, Mom had, Stella had a little birthday party for her. And so that's when the friendship began. And little Tacy, who was Frances Bic, came across the street with a little gift. And the little gift was a little glass pitcher. And we have replicas, but if you wish to see the real glass picture, it is down in the Mankato Library in the children's wing. As I mentioned, that we tried to be very accurate when we accepted donations. And when we purchased this lamp, we had a different one picked out, but then we found this one. And you can see how much it looks like the lamp in Lois Linsky's illustration. When Maud was about 12, the family finally got a telephone. And of course, it was a party line. Everybody could listen in who was on the party. This little curio cabinet, this little hutch, was one is one of the uh, things, one of the items that we do have from the family. We don't have a lot of items that was had been owned by the uh, family, but this one was owned by Maud and her husband, Alas, and she would keep her books that she had written in this hutch. Okay, with that, we'll go into the front parlor. parlor and a back parlor. And the front parlor was reserved for company and it was customary for women at the end of the day if they had their work done to put on their better dress and to sit in their chair by the front door and do their needlework and see if company might be calling. And at that time they actually brought calling cards and this is a calling card that was brought by Mrs. Gerlach. And Mrs. Gerlach lived down around the corner and that was Tim's mother in the books, Mrs. Miller. You can see how accurate we were. So it was for company. The kids didn't play here, but the children were able to come here and practice the piano. Both Maud and her older sister Kathleen took piano lessons and Kathleen would go on to have a career in music. She was a very good vocalist she studied abroad and she ended up as a 
a vocalist and a, a professor of voice in Salt Lake City. Maud was not known to have had very good piano lessons, so her teacher did not encourage her to go into music. So it was a good thing she became an author instead. Here we have some books, all of which were mentioned by Maud in her writings. They're not original to the family, but they are books that were important to the family. Another thing we do have that belonged to first to Stella and Tom is this table that was carved by Stella's father. He had been a, a World War, or excuse me, he had been a Civil War veteran, and when he came back from the Civil War, he carved this table out of a tree on their property down by Winnebago and gave it to Stella and Tom for their wedding. Later, it was down in the cellar, and when um, Maude married Delos, they took it up to their apartment in South Minneapolis. On the piano, we have several lovely photographs of the family, and you can always pick, up, uh, pick out Maude. She looked a lot like her mother, as did Kathleen. The back parlor is where the family would sit in the evenings after dinner. As I mentioned, the original footprint of this house was quite small. It was just the front parlor and the back parlor and two small little bedrooms upstairs. Now, if you examine the floorboards, you see that they've been patched. They've been patched, and you can follow that through here. So in the middle of this room was the staircase going upstairs. And so the original house, that was the parlor, this was the kitchen. And when we tore down the walls, we saw that a small cook stove in that corner was vented up there. And the original door for this dwelling was right there with a long screw, a porch in front. So the house at that time would have faced south rather than facing west. So the poor mother probably had to cook in that corner. She had perhaps a table down here and shelving around on the other side. When they remodeled the house and added to it, they removed the steps intact, cut a hole in this wall, and turned the steps so that they were on the other side of this wall. And until about six years ago, those were the original steps. And we did not have visitors go upstairs because they were very steep and uneven. So one of our former board members took the time to rebuild the steps for us. And since that time, we've been able to have guests go upstairs. So this is where the family congregated. This chair and footstool were actually the items that did belong to Tom Hart. Now, the family lived here until Maude was 14, and at that time, he got out of the shoe business. Tom Hart had had a shoe store downtown, and he ran for county treasurer. So they left this little house, which made Maude sad. This was always her favorite house. And they moved into a larger house on 5th Street. And so from, from their house, they could walk down the street to the high school. The girls went to the high school there and graduated in 1910 and then the father could walk down to the courthouse, which is now the historic courthouse here in Mankato. So they left this house, but she often came back to the neighborhood to visit her dear friend, Tacy. When we restored the house, we were very careful. We actually were a working board at the time, and we were very careful when we took down walls, when we took everything back to the studs, and if we found any little snippets of wallpaper, we laid them out and then and later found replica papers and hired a company to paper the house for us. You notice even the, even the ceiling is wallpapered. And our carpenter uh, scratched back on the woodwork. Much of this woodwork is the original woodwork and found several um, paint colors that we chose from them to match the uh, wallpaper that we selected. And in this little bedroom, this bedroom was added on after Helen, the third little girl, was born. And we actually did have, there was a very dark chocolate colored wallpaper in this room. So this was the parents. This became the parents' bedroom. 
And when the third baby was born, she would have stayed here with them until finally then she did go upstairs. So all three little girls were in the front bedroom and they, they would stay there and then until they moved down to Fifth Street. When you go upstairs, like in many older homes, you pass through one bedroom to enter the second because they didn't have hallways in those old homes. Um, this bedroom, you can see, it's got a small little bed. And if you remember the stories in the books, the little girls were sent away. And lo and behold, when they came back, there was a third baby to live with them in their house. They had another little sister. With that, we'll go upstairs carefully. And even though the steps are new, they are still fairly steep, so hang on. bedroom in the house on the upstairs was used by the hired girl. It was customary, the family, the Hart family had several hired girls over the years and girls from the countryside would often come in and live with families, help the mother and attend either the high school, there was no, there were no school buses at that time, or maybe the Mankato Normal School. So this is where the hired girl would sleep. And in the other bedroom, we had first Kathleen and Maude, and then Helen would come as well and sleep in this little room. When Betsy and Tacey were young, there is a tree that obscures the uh, vision right now. That tree out we see out this window was actually planted by Tom Hart. It's a beautiful maple tree. And at the time, it was a very small tree, and so the girls in the morning would, when they woke up, they would look out the window and wave to each other, and then later they would walk to school together. So kind of a cute little room, although pretty small. As I mentioned before, this was one of Maude's favorite places to write her stories. She had a trunk, not this trunk, but a trunk that she placed in front of the window with a flat surface on top and that she would use as her little desk. Now, by the time she was 10, she actually had written many beautiful little poems and she would keep her poems in that trunk. And for her birthday that year, her father went down to his friend, who was Mr. Hunt, the editor of the Free Press. And the father had come up while Maud was over at Pleasant Grove School, and he collected those little poems, and he took them down to the Free Press and asked his friend if he could not please publish those in a little book. And he did, and we still have that little book. It's also in the library next to the little glass picture. Picture. And so Maude could say that by age 10, she was a published poet. Well, we can go downstairs and take a look at the kitchen again as we leave the house. That concludes our tour for today.